After years of native mobile development, we've decided to go full steam ahead, building all of our new mobile apps using React Native. So I'm reading this from an article written by Shopify itself, the company Shopify. Many of you know Shopify. It's kind of the dominant player when it comes to selling merchandise online. It makes it very easy for you to put up an online store and sell some shit, basically. So recently they announced that they are going to be moving away from native development and they're going to be moving to React Native. Question that comes to my mind anyway is why aren't they using Flutter? You know, I'm not, I don't use Flutter personally. I don't use React Native personally. I'm a native Android guy. But, you know, from all the things that you hear out there, people talking about Flutter saying it's like the best thing since, I don't know, since toilet paper. It's the best thing that's been invented since toilet paper. That's what people talk about it like. Um, why wouldn't they use Flutter? Why are they using React Native? Now, I should mention for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know what React is, you don't know what Flutter is, you don't know what the word native means, what am I even talking about? Just for really quick, for those of you who don't know what the hell I'm talking about, when it comes to mobile development, you have kind of two choices. Uh, two, yeah, two choices, we'll say. Native mobile development, which means you are developing for the platform itself, for the Android operating system which is a linux operating system android is built on top of it by google it's kind of it's th that's why they call it native it's native to the platform the big shortcoming when if you go with native is you can only build an app that exists on the google play store you can't make an ios version of it so the next kind of category as i was about to say is cross-platform development so with cross-platform development you can build an app that works on both android and ios the downside of it is that it's usually not as good in some way there's some kind of limitation that's why native exists otherwise everybody would just use the cross-platform because obviously then you're killing two birds with one stone you get more users so the the context of this video here is talking about uh, it's a comparison between two of the big cross-platform players, which is React Native, which is what I just mentioned, and then Flutter. We all know about Flutter. Well, we all recently know about Flutter because everybody talks about it like it's the best thing since toilet paper, as I said. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to continue just looking at this article that was written by Shopify here and just read a couple of the things that they say. So first, this falls under the heading of uh, why they chose React Native. Uh, the first point that they mention here is they want to bring the power of JavaScript and the web to mobile. So basically what they're saying here is a bunch of our stuff, a bunch of our APIs, a bunch of our features are built using JavaScript and we want to leverage those and use on mobile. That makes complete sense. That's going to save them a lot of time. I'm sure uh, it's going to save them a lot of engineering and development time. They already have some stuff built. They want to reuse those things. React Native, Native uses JavaScript. Great. The second point here is they want to adopt a reactive programming model across all client-side applications. So this is kind of a weird point. It's almost like saying nothing at all the way I see it because um, native supports reactive programming. It has supported reactive programming for a long time. Rx came out, you know, what, three years ago or something like that. And even now moving forward, there's more reactive ways to code and natively so that that kind of is weird to me and then of course flutter is also reactive i believe it is don't quote me on that so that anyway so that makes me think like okay that's a weird thing to say but sure okay the third point here is consolidate our ios and android development onto a single stack obviously that's great they want to do cross-platform they want to kill two birds with one stone they want one app for both ios and android that makes sense so those are the three points that they list for um, switching over to a cross-platform development uh, experience using React Native. But none of these points really could separate React Native from Flutter. Flutter theoretically could do all of these things other than the JavaScript stuff, I guess, and other than leveraging the JavaScript stuff. But Flutter would still theoretically be a good, a good choice here with those points listed. So now let's go. Let's go on an adventure here and let's try and figure out why they chose React Native and why they didn't choose Flutter. Um, and of course, this is all anecdotal. This is just my opinions, my exploring random stuff on the internet, trying to figure out what's going on. But I think that the, the things that I'm gonna talk about are pretty logical. So let's take a look here. So first let's head on down to the old Flutter GitHub page. This is the GitHub page where the code for Flutter exists. There's a nice 86,000 stars. That's a lot of stars. Um, but if you come on over here and direct your attention to issues, there is also five more than 5,000 issues. I don't even know. I've never seen that many issues on 
anything ever before. I don't even know how high that number could go up before it like does 5,000 plus. Maybe it's 10,000, maybe it's 20,000, I don't know. Either way, that's a, that is a shitload of issues. That is one metric shitload of issues. The chances are the chances of you getting your issue looked at are slim to none basically if you post an issue in there so that's like that's a big red flag right there that's insane i don't i've never seen that before i'm kind of just blown away i keep looking at it and i keep going wow that's amazing all right so um a lot of issues now let's go over to the react native github page so we have about the same amount of stars 84,000 compared to 86,000. Um, but you have 719 issues and also keep in mind that this this has been around for many years I think it's it's more than five years. It's been around it might even be approaching 10 years that, that it has been around for So this is like this is a battle tested framework This has been used in a lot of really popular apps So some of the most popular apps that you would know of that used or used or did use or do still use to some extent react native is Instagram, which has over a billion downloads. That's a huge amount of downloads. Facebook has over 5 billion downloads. Facebook Ads Manager, it has a lot of downloads, not I think in the millions. Pinterest has over 100 million downloads, Skype, and then Tesla. So those are some really popular apps. A lot of people are using them and those use React Native. So that brings that brings me to my next kind of uh, my next kind of thought is what are the popular apps that are using Flutter? Which how many users do they have? Do I even know them? Let's let's talk about some of those. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by CodingWithMitch.com. CodingWithMitch.com is a website where you can learn how to become a native mobile developer, or you can hone your skills as a native mobile developer using both Kotlin and Java. There is courses for Kotlin and Java. Even if you are a complete beginner when it comes to native Android development, there is a great course for that that I can recommend, the SQLite for Beginners 2019 course. This course teaches you the best practice ways to use SQLite and the Room Persistence Library on Android. So that's how to store data locally in an SQLite database on the phone itself. It's great for beginners. It's ideal for beginners. It shows you everything from installing Java, installing Android Studio, to actually uh, building a real application, your first real application. And of course, there is much more advanced courses. We have courses on testing, architecture, uh, retrofit, dagger. There's also even some web courses. You can build a REST API, build, um, build a website with Django. We got unit testing, RxJava, Kotlin, coroutines, all kinds of content, some free, some paid. Check it out, codingwithmitch.com. So probably the most popular app that you would know of that uses Flutter, or it doesn't it doesn't use Flutter um, across its entire app, but it has Flutter components, is the Alibaba app. This is the Canada or Alibaba.com, I guess. This might be the Canada version. I'm not actually sure. Let me go back here. This is no Alibaba.com. So just clicking on here, and this one has uh, over 50 million downloads. But this is this is not like the entire app made with Flutter. There's only components made with Flutter. But this is by far the, the most popular or the largest app that uses Flutter. Next on my list here, I have another app called Reflectify. 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 Uh, and this is a some kind of a journaling app. I don't know. I've never used it. I've never heard of it before, but I just found it in an article. And this has over 1 million downloads. Now, I'm not sure if this is completely made with Flutter, but I believe they did say that this one is completely made with Flutter. Seems like a pretty simple app, but it has uh, so one, 1 million downloads. Still, you know, this is nowhere in comparison to some of the React Native apps like you, Instagram 1 billion, Facebook 5 billion, Pinterest 100 million. That's that's insane. Those are insane numbers. So there's, uh, there's this is very, very few users compared to what React Native has seen. So in my journeys of kind of looking for apps that use Flutter, reading stuff about Flutter, seeing what people are doing with it, I stumbled across this guy named David De, I'm not going to try and say, say his last name. I'm going to say it wrong. So David, I'm going to call him David. He is, he's a so-called Flutter expert. Um, I'm not saying he's not or anything like that. I'm just saying this is... I've read a number of articles that have referenced him, and they say that he knows a lot about Flutter. So let's, let's just read here. I found an article where he says uh, kind of what he thinks about Flutter. I, I guess his like 
um, summary or consensus about Flutter. Who should use Flutter? So Flutter is absolutely a choice that every CTO or mobile developer should be considering. It is particularly well suited for new apps uh, and then in brackets, i.e. it's not as good for integrating into an existing app or project that, that don't require deep hardware or OS integrations. First off, most users don't, I uh, don't want to read the rest. So basically what it says there is it's good for new apps, not for apps that already exist and trying to integrate into existing products. And then also nothing that uses hardware. So like Bluetooth, uh, any kind of sensors in the phone, uh, operating system integration. So anything that needs the operating system or any kind of a sensor that exists in the phone. Basically it has to be an app that exists completely independently of the any of the phone hardware that's kind of the punchline so don't use bluetooth don't use the camera stuff like that although i'm pretty sure people have built apps using the camera with flutter but i'm i can't give you a reference to that actually you know what it is it is worth worth reading his next paragraph here he says first off most users don't know that flutter is not fully native previous clop cross-platform frameworks didn't feel native enough. Flutter's rendering render is very fast and it does not have the same limitations for performance or security that we feel plague other frameworks looking at you JavaScript. So basically what he just did there was he, he straight up targeted React Native and said, looking at you React Native and your limitations. But I don't necessarily know that he's uh, correct anymore. Let me just look at the date of this article here. This was written uh, August 2019. Yeah, so it's pretty new, but so I don't I don't necessarily know this is true anymore because Shopify actually said that React Native had a lot of limitations before, but now moving forward 2019, 2020, they've kind of cleaned it up a little bit. So let's go back to the React Native article. Yeah, so here, here Shopify says, uh, at Shopify, the idea had its skeptics, they're referring to moving to React Native and still does, um, but saw its promise. At the company's next hack days, the entire company spent time on React Native. While the early team saw many benefits, they decided they wouldn't ship an app and be proud using React Native in 2015. So this is way back in 2015 that they were looking at that. So for the most part, this had to do with performance and the absence of first class Android support. So um, things have changed. They've, they've recently kind of reevaluated things. React Native have stepped up its game. Um, it, they actually listed some metrics if you were to continue reading this article and talks about performance and things. So I don't know if old, um, old uh, what's that guy's name? David? I think it was David. I don't know if old David is uh, necessarily correct anymore. I think that maybe React Native had its limitations before, but recently stepped up its game. So I don't know. Plus Flutter has over 5,000 issues and React Native has only 700. So anyway, I'm just looking at this practically. And practically speaking, what I think about Flutter is it seems really great if you are um, a, a small startup or you are an, an independent developer and you want to you need you have an idea you have a great idea but you don't have money you want to use flutter 100 percent. well i guess react native is also a choice but flutter seems to be really great you can get it up quickly um it's it looks really nice like nice pre-built widgets everything looks good it runs smoothly and you can get kind of um an mvp a minimum viable product out there get it into people's hands and get them using it if you are a company that has some more money you, you've got you've got some funds to work with, but you, you want to go with a cross-platform um, experience or cross-platform app, React Native, that's what it looks like. It looks like React Native is superior. I'm just going to come out and say it. Basically, what I'm trying to say, yes, is that React Native looks like it is superior to Flutter. Flutter is like the bottom of the barrel where you want to start, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have its place. It does have its place. If you have no money and you have a great idea and you got to put something out there as a solo guy or a very small team, Flutter is a great option. If you are a company, like I said, that, that has some money and you want to build a good app experience, but you want it to be cross-platform, React Native looks like it's your option. Um, so yeah, I hope, I mean, I hope I didn't come across as super biased here. I just trying to state the facts, state all the things that I've kind of taken in from the internet, all the things that I read, what Shopify is saying, um, you know, comparing the issues on GitHub, that's a pretty, pretty black and white thing to do. Let me know in the comments below. If you're a Flutter developer and I pissed you off, um, don't just leave some comment that says I'm dumb or I'm wrong or something. You can if you want, but a better thing to do would leave a comment that tells me why I'm wrong. I would really like I'm I'm open. I'm open to hear your opinions. I want to hear uh, what Flutter has helped you do 
maybe why it sucked, maybe, you know, why it's great, what React Native is great for. I want to know uh, specifically what the thing is good for. So that's going to be it for the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.